Jamie Eisenberg. Here we go, Jamie. I definitely know your name. He has been absolutely crushing it when it comes to his starts of the week. And we have the receipts to prove it. Week one, it was Tua. Then he went Jared Goff, he Mostert, who absolutely went off with over 45 fantasy points per game. And then Justin Fields, last week, Jamie, you said, let's get wild. I think we're going to see Justin Fields, you know, return to doing Justin Fields things. There was some, some people who were questioning your start of the week there, and it was another win. So we want you to continue the streak, give us another, you know, guy that we absolutely must start, and you've been killing it. So who is it for week five? Well, well first off, thank you. I uh, don't jinx me. Um, okay, knock on wood, knock uh, on everything. But you, you said, I have, I have a streak going. I'm going to keep the streak going by following the same team. Raheem Mostert, Broncos, <laughs> Justin Fields, Broncos, Brees Hall, <laughs> Broncos. It's not rocket science. Play against the Broncos at this point. Uh, you know, Brees Hall's been tough to trust, clearly, coming back from the torn ACL. I love certain narratives, and there's a lot at play here. You got Nathaniel Hackett going back to face his former team. This is the place where Brees Hall tore his ACL in Week 7 last year, and I think that's going to matter to him. Uh, and then the biggest thing, though, is Robert Sala said no more pitch count so we're going to see the best of Brees Hall probably that we haven't seen yet this year now he had a great week one performance against Buffalo that was fun to watch when he had the 83 yard uh, run and that's the only game that they won and so I think you're going to see them lean on Brees Hall quite a bit in this matchup the Broncos clearly though is the the the, the savior for a lot of <laughs> fantasy managers playing against this defense the last four, four last three games four running backs against this defense 22 or more 22.2 or more PPR points, 11 touchdowns against this defense. They're getting some guys back on defense, which might change some things a little bit. But I think the way Brees Hall is going to run, how Nathaniel Hackett will use him. He had four carries for 72 yards and a touchdown in the first quarter before getting hurt against Denver last year. He's going to finish the job in this matchup. I think I have him too low at 15. So I, mean, I just want to get ahead of things here. Pacheco in week number six because they play the Broncos, and then Jordan Love in week seven. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do when the Chiefs play the Broncos again in week eight? I'm kind of curious. Don't answer right, that. Right, don't answer. Right. Rice at that point. Okay, you know what? He might be great. I want to give you a stat on Brees Hall. Four games last year, he had at least 14 touches, scored at least 14 PPR points in every single one of them, and he did it without playing 70% of the snaps in any of those games. I think that this is a great pick. He's at least a number two fantasy running back. All right, so the the we've cracked the code. Whoever the Broncos are playing, we <laughs> got to go on the other side, and that's where the start of the I mean, he's going to have be. a problem in week nine, but other than that, I think if, it's a, it's I, a good I, I will say this. Uh, we don't usually do a Thursday night player. If if, if the Commanders were playing the Bears on Thursday night, Brian Robinson would have been the start of the week. Right. Okay. This is the second time Brian Robinson's been this close to being the start of the week. Maybe in week nine. All right. So, Dave, we're going to get to your running back sits and starts. And one of the guys that you're starting or your start is Isaiah Pacheco, who was the guy for Kansas City against the Jets. He went off. I, I told you guys I got absolutely just destroyed in my fantasy league. And Isaiah Pacheco was the one guy that I had, my one saving grace last week. And you know what? He's actually been the guy for Kansas City the last two weeks, at least 15 carries in each of those games, a touchdown in each of those games. And I think he's going to continue to be the main workhorse in this Kansas City backfield, one of the highest over-unders in their game against the Minnesota Vikings. And the Vikings' run defense, yeah, they showed out against L.A. a couple weeks ago. That was without Austin Eckler there. Last week they went up against Carolina. No big deal. That was Miles Sanders. He even got benched in the second half. I think Pacheco stuck up and has another big week this week so I think he's a great start in that same kind of range as Brees Hall but even I've got to admit Brees Hall is more upside and I know that sounds crazy but it's Brees Hall without the snap count he's already shown signs of life James already talked about I don't need to say anything more <laughs> about Isaiah Pacheco but I do have to say something about Ramondre Stevenson he's had at least 16 touches in every game and that's good but he has yet to total 100 yards in the game he's been under 70 yards three times how about this the New England Patriots have run one play this season inside the five-yard line. And that was a Ramondre touchdown, but they're not getting near the goal line. It's kind of a problem when you're a running back like Ramondre. He's not getting every single touch and the matchup on top of it. I think it's a little bit difficult going up against the New Orleans Saints. They've been great against running backs. So I'd stay away from Ramondre Stevenson. I'd rather go with uh, Jaleel, Jaleel McLaughlin, Alexander Madison. Those are two guys I'd definitely start ahead of Ramondre. All right, and Brees Hall, too. Okay, of course, Brees Hall. Let's talk about QB starts and sits. I want to talk about your sit because we were talking about him a little bit off camera, Joe Burrow. Now, Joe Burrow said, hey, this is the best I've ever felt after a game Prove this it. season. Prove it. But you're not buying it, Jamie. No, I'm not. I want to see it first. You know, I want to see Joe Burrow look like Joe Burrow, and that's what we're all waiting for. You know, it's been very frustrating. Three or four games so far this season with eight 
fantasy points or less. That's not Joe Burrow. You know, that's certainly somebody that's not a starting fantasy quarterback and not somebody I think that a lot of people want to roster at this point. And so you might not have T. Higgins for this week. That's a big piece missing to this offense. And so I'd rather see him go out and have a good game, but it's going to be on my bench because I want to see it first. He's got one game with 19 fantasy points. And this matchup isn't something to fear. You know, the Cardinals have done a nice job. Their defense, I think, is playing a little bit over their heads. If Joe Burrow was normal Joe Burrow, we're talking maybe top three fantasy quarterback, but I, this is going to make me throw up saying it. I'd rather start Zach Wilson. That's how oh I feel gosh. about Joe Burrow yeah. right now. That Zach Wilson <laughs> coming off the game we saw against Kansas City, going against that Denver defense, is in a better spot than Joe Burrow is. In terms of Anthony Richardson, I don't know why he's even projected to be the 10th best quarterback. He's got top five upside. We've seen it now in three games that he's played. A half against the Texans. He was on pace for 30-plus fantasy points. He had over 30 fantasy points last week. He had 22 points in week one. And this matchup, this defense, has allowed unbelievable performances to a couple of quarterbacks so far this season. Justin Herbert and Deshaun Watson, both over 25 fantasy points. I think Anthony Richardson, I don't understand. I saw his start percentage was at 50%. This is a must-start quarterback. And so until that happens, it gives us the ability to say, start him. We don't have to you know, <laughs> use the caveat of we're not telling you the obvious because he's not being started across the board. Please make him obvious. We shouldn't be talking about him anymore. He's that good. I think Joe Burrow actually has a game where he plays close to his ceiling. The problem is, is that his ceiling now is like 15 to 17 fantasy points. So not a great start at all. Richardson's ceiling is double that. So absolutely, Richardson is a must. Yeah, our guy, I say our guy. You guys know I'm a big AR fan, but yeah. he uh, has a rushing touchdown on each of his starts there. And, he, and I think Chris has him on his bench. He's got, he's got 10 fantasy points just with his rushing totals alone in every start that he's made so far this season. When you're getting that as the floor, and I don't care about Jonathan Taylor coming back. I think he's going to be a boost to this right. offense. He's not going to hurt Anthony Richardson, so Richardson's still going to be perfectly fine. He might help Anthony Richardson because he can be an outlet on short throws. Yeah, we talked about uh, JT slowly being added into that rotation there. Jamie Eisenberg, Dave Richard joining us as we're doing our starts and sits for week five. You can catch the guys on the Fantasy Football Today podcast.